Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. Today's the day we're going to start draining the pond. Now in case you guys missed it, I posted a video explaining the whole backstory of the construction of the pond, everything that led up to it, everything that led up to its failure. And uh, if you missed that one, go back and watch it because it's going to give you all the details on why this pond is failing. But uh, I've got a guy that's going to be here in a couple of minutes. He's bringing a three inch pump over. And it's actually the guy that is going to sell us the clay, truck the clay in, and he's going to be bringing a dozer and an excavator in here to spread the clay into the bottom. So the plan here is we're going to put in 8 to 12 inches of clay all across the bottom of this pond after we get it drained down. And uh, hopefully once we get that rolled in and tracked in and everything, that'll seal up the bottom of this pond. All right, so change of plans. I just got a call from the guy bringing the three inch pump over. He's not gonna be able to make it until tomorrow morning. I wanna make good use of the time here and work on starting to get the beach area out of here. Get as much of the sand out as I can, salvage as much good sand as I can. And then I know when we start scratching the bottom of the barrel here, it's gonna start getting clay and some of this um, driveway fabric mixed in with it. And I'll set all of that off to the side to use for fill somewhere. We put probably two triaxle loads of sand in here and I'll be lucky to get one back out. And I know we'll, when we do get the pond full and we go to start building the beach again, I'll have to get more sand. But uh, I really wanna get as much good sand with no, no impurities in it, set that off to, to the side to reuse and then anything that's gonna have the impurities in it, I'll use that for fill. So we're gonna work on that while we're waiting for him to get here till tomorrow. Another thing we need to work on is the French drain that we put in to catch water off of this hillside and go into the pond. We need to uh, redirect that elsewhere, not into the pond, so that way we can get this to dry out so we can get equipment in here to work. So that's what we're gonna work on until tomorrow morning when he can get here with the pump.
All right, so we got the whole beach area removed. That's a good pile of sand. That pile has impurities like clay and rock and stuff in it. And just about right now, we got the guy coming bringing the pump. All right, so he just dropped off the three inch pump and he had the rigid hose for the infeed side. And then he had a couple hundred feet of the uh, non-rigid hose or the collapsible like fire hose. And I said, do you have any rigid hose we could use for the discharge side? Because what I'd like to do is have it go straight from the pond down into the standpipe. So we're not flopping that hose over the backside of the dam and you know creating a muddy mess or any wash ruts on the backside of the dam or down in the firewood yard. And the second thing that's going to accomplish by having a rigid hose going up into the standpipe and not kinking is we'll be able to test this standpipe. The pond has never been full yet, so we haven't really got a chance to test it. I've taken a couple five gallon buckets of water and thrown them down there to see if we could see water coming out the backside and we did, but uh, this will be a real good test. If there's any debris or silt or anything on the inside of there from when we put the pipe together, this will flush all that out and the standpipe should be good to go. So we're gonna start draining it here any minute. So right here I'm using the excavator to cut a little bench into the pond dam so that we can bring the water pump down and have a nice flat level spot to set it. There it goes. Yeah, that's crazy for a three inch line. It's got that eight inch yeah, pipe almost full. All right, so we got Ralph here. We got the pump running in the background. Uh, this is Ralph Hunter. You own a gravel pit. What's the name of the business? R Hunter Incorporated. R Hunter Incorporated. So I've bought aggregate material from Ralph before, um, a lot for the, the uh, firewood road that we've got coming down here. And I was gonna use him to truck in all the clay. And you know, you said it was 210 bucks a load for, for clay, which is, Pretty reasonable actually and especially with how much we're gonna need um, and I was talking to some other people about the plans for the pond and everything and uh, some people that I had talked to said well if you're gonna have Ralph truck in all the clay have him do the work as well because you not only do the gravel pit but you also do excavating work what what equipment do you have I got some bulldozers track hose uh, dump trucks high lifts you know the basic excavating contractor equipment now, what, what bulldozer do you think you're going to bring in here? Probably just my D5. D5. That's what yeah. we had in here before was a D5, and it yeah. seemed to work pretty well. Um, now, you were telling me you've done ponds, you've, you've built ponds, you've repaired ponds before, yeah. which is what I want. I want somebody with experience who's done this kind of thing before. You were telling me about one pond in particular. Tell us a little bit about that oh, one. I was in a sandstone quarry, and the guy's got a real nice pond now. And I just packed the bottom with clay, mined it right on the site, just traded rock for clay and worked out really nice. Now, how much clay did you have to put in? We only put about maybe eight to 12 inches down. That's kind of what I was thinking here. I've, I've seen another YouTuber, he built a five acre pond and they put in a two foot clay blanket mm -hmm. and rolled it in with a, 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 a sheep's foot roller. And so I was a little hesitant if eight to 12 inches would be enough, but I also we'll need to put keep- put in whatever you want. <laughs> I need to keep cost in mind as well. So I'm hoping eight to 12 inches will be enough, especially if we get a sheep's foot roller in here and, and get it packed in real nice. So right. anyway, this is Ralph. He's gonna be the one trucking the clay, doing the work on the pond. We've got somebody experienced here that's gonna be doing it. And uh, I'm hoping, you know, this winter we've got a full pond or at least in the springtime sometime, so. It might, well, with the amount of water you have coming in, if we seal it up, it'll be full before fall, I'd say. Okay, awesome. All right, <clears throat> well, thank you, Ralph. You're welcome.
Thank you. So here's something cool. I just came down here to refuel the pump, and when I shut it off to refuel it, I heard water still running, which means we have an effective siphon going. So I'm just gonna let gravity do its thing uh, until our elevation in the water gets down lower than where we're pumping it down to here in the standpipe, and then we'll fire the pump back up. It's not going to drain as quickly with just the siphon as it would with the pump, but we're saving fuel. And just for comparison's sake, here we are down here at where the uh, standpipe drains out to. There's how much water is coming out with just the siphon running. No gasoline required. All right, so it's the next day. The uh, pump slash siphon has been running for about 24 hours. And as you can see, the pond is down another three or four feet since we started yesterday. So now we're getting to the quickest part. It should really start to empty out fast. The last thing I need to get done here before we're ready for equipment to come in is we need to redirect our French drain that we put in here to catch the water off the hillside. So we have gravel and perforated pipe running to right there. At that point, we've captured all the water from the hillside and we transitioned to solid pipe and clay to force it into the perforated pipe. And it runs down right through here into the pond. So there's a couple options. The first one would be just to dig up that French drain and create a new channel going around the back side of the dam. I don't really want to do that because the French drain is working really well when we want water going into the pond. So another option would be to grab some PVC pit fittings and hook a hose or a, you know, a drain pipe on the end of that uh, SDR 35 that's coming out and wheel it up and around the back side of the dam. So I think that's what we're going to do. That way we don't have to tear into any of the integrity of the French drain here. All right, so in order to redirect our French drain, we have to go from our SDR 35 that's coming out of the ground for the French drain to our corrugated black drain pipe. And in order to make that connection, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna do the job of what we need to keep the water out of the pond for like three to four weeks so we can do the work. I've got this adapter here that slips over the end of the SDR 35, and then it slips on the inside of the uh, corrugated black drain pipe. Now that's not gonna be a watertight seal, but it's gonna be close. And so what we're gonna do to try to get it even a little better is take a hose clamp, put that over that connection there, and then duct tape the snot or gorilla tape the snot out of both ends to keep it from coming apart. This isn't what I would do if we were trying to do something for long term for years and years and years, but for three weeks, hopefully it'll work. And really the main goal, even if it does have a little bit of a leak, it's not gonna be the end of the world. I just wanna make sure that if we get some kind of gully washer or something, we don't get another two feet of water in the bottom of the pond because when we get a good rain, this four inch pipe will be full and it'll put a big puddle in the bottom of the pond again real quick. All right, I am hopeful and pretty confident that if we get a, a big rain, that's gonna keep the majority of the water out of the pond. And just like that, our French drain is no longer going into the pond. We've got it repiped to the back side of the dam. All right, guys, I think that's gonna about wrap this one up. We got a lot accomplished in this one. We got the beach area removed because sand is the last thing you want on the bottom of your pond when you're trying to keep it from leaking. We got all the geotextile removed and we got the pump in the pond. We are now draining water. We're down about three or four feet right now. Let me know in the comments below how long you think it'll take to finish this. Right now we're at about 24 hours. I can't imagine we have at least any more than another day left on draining this pond. And we got our French drain here redirected. So when this does dry out, it'll allow it to stay dry and we won't have to continue fighting trying to keep it drained. If you guys enjoyed this one and you're looking forward to seeing us move all the equipment in here and get started on fixing this pond up right, Click that subscribe button and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.